Mac Power Users episode 478, Journaling with Day One. Hello and welcome back to the Mac Power Users. My name is Stephen Hackett. I am joined as always by my friend and yours, David Sparks. Hello, Mr. Hackett. How are you today? I'm doing I'm doing well. I'm a little nervous because we're straying into a topic that I know you really love, and I'm I'm going to have to cap the hippiness at some point. Just oh yeah, yeah. I agree. At some point, have to like you have to like slam it shut real quick before too much gets out of the jar. No, I I think that um, and there's nothing worse than a recent convert to anything, right? <laughs> and like January of 2018, I uh, I got my day one subscription. I paid for it. And said, okay, I'm going to give this a year. And now now that I've been using a year and I love it, I'm like really into it. And mm -hmm. you are going to have to shut me down uh, quite <laughs> a bit over this episode. That's all right. It's, it's, a, it's a really cool app and we get to explore a lot of different things today. Uh, so I am excited to get into it. When we were putting this together. I think we, we thought, well, the most obvious way to get into something like day one is to, to first talk about journaling itself, which, of course, you can do outside of an app. And we're going to talk about the benefits of doing it with an app versus the benefits of doing it sort of in an analog fashion. But this is where you get a, a few minutes to to be a hippie. So yeah, and this is just a minor version of a any episode of Focused. So <laughs> this stuff, <laughs> like I think we're going to do an episode on journaling sometime on Focused from a very different angle from this episode. But the um, but basically, I felt like I, I, you know, 2017, I was reading books and talking to people that had done journaling, and they were all like me, zealots about it, saying, "Oh, you wouldn't believe how helpful it is if you spend a few minutes every day collecting your thoughts and writing them down." And it doesn't really matter how you do it. In fact, that's what of the running themes of this episode, but but we both really like day one. And um, and so all my friends were telling me to do it, and I thought, that's stupid, and it's a waste of my time, and I'm too busy. But then I decided so many people had recommended that I do it that I'll try it, and immediately saw the benefits of it. So, um, you know, there's different kinds of journaling. There's the kind of journaling you do for the future, you know, like if you were Teddy Roosevelt and you know, you wanted the future generations to know your innermost thoughts. <laughs> um, I am not that person. I, okay. uh, you know, I'm just a nerd in California. So I, I, I use journaling as a way of reflecting on my own thoughts and keeping myself honest with myself, if that makes sense. I think it's sure. a good compliment to meditation. So there, how's that for super hippie? Yeah. Uh, but it's something you just got to try and see if it works for you. Uh, I'll try and look up in fact, I'll talk to Mike Schmitz, uh, he, my co-host and Focus. He'll know of all the books you should read if you really want to get into the hippie part. But needless to say, I found that uh, getting a journaling habit uh, worked really well for me. And uh, it's something that I, uh, I'm really happy I've been doing. And um, now it's just, it's gone from an experiment to now a full built-in habit, something I do every day. And, um, and we're going to talk about how we do that throughout this episode. Is that, is that watered down enough? Yeah, that's uh, that's great. I really like that idea of am I doing it for like the past or the future? Uh, and we're going to get into some of the examples of what we do. But I, you know, I don't ever think about that in terms of what I'm going to write. Like, oh, like, you know, what if my kids see this in the future when I'm uh, dead and gone? But that is an interesting angle to it. And it's such a huge topic. Like you said, y'all can talk about it on Focus, I'm sure, from a very different standpoint than we're doing. Uh, but for me, I I tend to to use it as as a sort of like a personal history. So as we get into the features of day one, one of my favorite ones is showing you what happened on this day, you know, years ago. And I've been using day one for you know years and years and years now. And so that's a pretty lengthy list of things that it can pull from. And I like to to see kind of where where I've been, both you know physically, literally, sometimes like oh this trip was three years ago. You know, I forgot we did this funny thing or emotional or, or spiritual growth as well. So it, there's a lot of different angles into this. And the beauty of these tools is that there's really there's really no wrong or right thing to do with them, right? If, if you wanted to have a journal that was simply, this is what I ate for dinner every day for 15 years, like, you can do it. Like, they're, they're very agnostic in the sense of what you put into them. And I think that helps this become... A little less scary for people. I think when we talk about, you know, hey, you, you, you know, the, the benefits we have from journaling, I think that's intimidating to some people to think about. Oh, like, 
everything I write really needs to be important or everything I, I log in this journal, you know, needs to have uh, some sort of significance. And, and the reality is, at least for me, that's not true at all. There's stuff in, in my journals in the past that, you know, felt important at the time, but weren't. Yep. But very often it's things that didn't feel important at the time, but I wrote them down. And now I see them as part of a, a larger story. And so this feeling of having something like, too precious or not too precious to put in. I know it's hard to set aside, but I think it's an important thing to set aside. Uh, one thing that Merlin said on Back to Work years and years, I mean, like 2011, probably like years ago, we're talking about paper notebooks and sort of journaling of uh, the, basically the, the notebooks are not so important. Like I can't put anything in them. Right. And I think we, especially when you have a paper notebook, it's like, oh, yeah. every page counts. And that's just not true. And it's especially not true when you're using an app because you, it removes that sort of physicality from it. I think that's like a cool reason to go digital. But we'll, like I said, we'll get to that in a little bit. You know, now that I think about it, I'm supposed to be the zealot, but you've been doing journaling daily or frequently much longer than I have. Because I, I played with day one on off and on for years, but it wasn't mm-hmm. until last year that I got real serious about it. Yeah, um, my, my my I scrolled way back. My earliest entries in day one are from February 2010, so almost a decade. Yeah, and uh, and but you do also make a very good point, uh, just kind of on the navel gazing part, is that uh, if you're thinking that you have to have heavy thoughts every time you open your journal, you're not doing it right. I mean, I can say that because it's just not, that's just not the way it works. I look at it as almost like a cash dump out of my brain at the end of the day. And sometimes I, after I get it all out, I'm like, oh, look at that. There's something going on in there that I didn't realize. And once I put it on a piece of paper, I can kind of pick it apart and realize that it's something that's important or something that's nonsense or whatever. But it's just the process of pulling that stuff apart that that really helps me. And, and that's why I do think it's kind of, uh, from my vantage point at least is, um, I think if you want to try this, do not try it with the idea of making this legacy item for your grandchildren to read because Mm -hmm. they don't care, honestly. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And, and this is a tool that can really help you today. And, and maybe look at it that way. And maybe if you let yourself be that honest with it, uh, maybe it will actually be something your grandchildren want to read. You know, you never know. But but don't don't try and, and make something. You know, it's like, you know, it's the same problem I have with Facebook posts. You know, when I see my wife shows me these Facebook posts from people that, that I know well, and I'm like, wait a second, that's not that person. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't Facebook post your diary. It's not, that's not good. <laughs> Uh, anyway, um, this is this is something that can be helpful. Uh, you know, make your own choice if you want to do it. But but if you do want to do it, uh, we thought we'd talk a little bit about. Uh, Steve and I are both big day one advocates. Um, uh, they have no idea we're making the show. We have no relationship with them, uh, but we like the app. But we also do some. I do some paper stuff. I want to talk about that and how it fits. This kind of follows up on our live show because that was one of the segments. Uh, something I was struggling with them. Uh, that I have since figured out. And uh, we also have some other apps in the outline so we can talk about if day one doesn't scratch the itch for you. So uh, hopefully with this episode, by the end, you'll uh, not only be motivated to try it, but know which tools you want to use. Yeah. So th- let's let's talk a little bit about, um, about how we use them, because I think that can help give some context to what we're talking about. I saw a screenshot of yours, so I'm going to go first. Uh, <laughs> because your, your screenshot of them was uh, your different journals is really interesting. My setup in day one is actually rel- relatively straightforward, I think. I have three journals uh, in the application. Day one lets you create different journals, which I think is a really nice feature, actually. Uh, I have the just the default journal, which I just named very interestingly, Stephen. And that is, like I said, it's the default. So it is things... Uh, you know, photos and a couple paragraphs when we take a trip or if something happens at home or at work that I want to remember. There's like, again, there's no real line as far as like what I deem worthy of going in here. Something as simple as a screenshot of a text message, you know, from somebody that meant a lot. Or if I'm reading and a a passage in a book really spoke to me, you know, copying that text and putting it in there. So it's it's a hodgepodge of stuff over the years, but just sort of a, a running a running journal of things that I want to, to remember for later. That's the default. I'm in that one, I would probably say, two to three times a week 
If I'm traveling, you know, at the end of a trip, I always want to put sort of pictures and highlights in there. But two to three times a week, I think, is probably my average over the last year or so. Uh, then I have my second journal called Fake Twitter. So I am uh, – we've spoken about this, uh, and I've spoken about other places as well. Spending less time with, on social media, and there are sometimes things that I would want to share on social media, but I'm trying to use this as a gatekeeper to, to tweet less, to spend less time there. And so Fake Twitter is a journal of things that if I were spending more time online on social media, I may have shared on Twitter or if I still had a Facebook account. So these things are very often little jokes, screenshots I found funny. Sometimes I use this ironically of things that I could not share on Twitter. You know, something internal to Relay happens that's funny, and I just want to kind of store it here. So fake Twitter, very low bar of what goes into it, but very few things ever make it out of it. And so how do you make additions to that fake Twitter, just using the, the day one tools? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, opening, creating a new journal, adding an image. Most of them are images. You know, yeah. most of them are screenshots usually. Or just or just a plain text, you know, just yeah. uh, a journal here, just like a sentence or two. And then what's the new one? Yeah, so the new one is called Logs, just L-O-G-S. And this really is something I've been thinking about a long time and have started – Earlier this year, I was actually looking to see when I, I started it. Uh, I started this in uh, late February of just writing every day. And so I have a very simple format. I have a paragraph or two of just what I what is on my mind or what the day was. This is very free form as, as to what goes into this. So like scrolling through these, very often it's just, hey, you know, uh, I got this, this, and this done. And... This person came over, I had lunch with this person, just a little snapshot of the day. And then I have three uh, sections under that. I have three completed tasks, so three things that I got done in the day. It can be everything from, you know, recording Mac Power users. You know, on Mondays, this is the bulk of my of my work day is preparing and, and working on this show. So very often that service is there. Or it could be little things like... You know, this morning I got up and I fixed a, a light fixture that was out in our laundry room that had been bugging my wife for several days. And so, you know, maybe that ends up there. Just three things I did, again, work or personal, and then one bad thing and one good thing. So just something that helped shape the day, maybe more on the emotional side of things. You know, a friend had good news and they shared it with me, or, you know, someone had a baby or someone is, you know, in the hospital, just something to sort of root the day in real life. So this isn't just about, you know, work and things that I've done, but trying to bring that human connection into it. Most of the time, I write these in a paper notebook and take a picture and store it in day one. Sometimes I just type directly into the day one application. Like sometimes I'll, I'll, I usually do these in the evening before bed. And so sometimes I would have left my field notes notebook, you know, in my backpack in my office accidentally. So I just do it on my phone. And the third way I'm, I'm experimenting with this is I've created like a PDF template and import it into good notes. And on occasion, I'll just get the Apple pencil and kind of write on this template and then save an image of that. So the the entry into logs is different depending on the day, but that format is, is very consistent. I've been doing it generally, you know, five to six times a week uh, throughout uh, the last couple of months. And I'm really enjoying that. I like the structure it gives me at the end of the day. And I kind of like that it's separate from my other journal. So I can just, I could if I wanted to go back through this history, it's kind of in its own timeline. This episode of the Mac Power Users is brought to you by our friends at 1Password. All of us have so many online accounts. I actually was scrolling through 1Password just a couple of days ago. I was helping a friend get set up on theirs, and they were asking me, you know, what sort of things should I save in here? You know, what sort of, what, what is this good for? And I scrolled through 1Password, and I sort of surprised myself about how many things I'm storing in there, how many different logins and accounts I have access to and that 1Password knows about. It, it was really, really surprising. Everything from Apple ID passwords, different email accounts, social media accounts, of course, and then things like online banking, things like uh, I have to file state paperwork uh, you know, for the business every year, and that's some ancient state website. I have that in there. Basically, every login I'm going to need throughout the course of my life is in one password. And it was really neat to see how many things you can put 
in there. One of my favorite features is the ability to store bank account information. So I very often have to send our like routing number to somebody, you know, for work. And that that's really sensitive data, right? I don't want that data just in a text document on Dropbox. I want that safe and sound within 1Password's encrypted environment. And they have a form that I could fill out. So routing number, account number, branch information, uh, notes, all of these things that when someone needs that information for Relay, I just have it all in one place. I don't have to go hunt it down. And I know that it's safe and secure in 1Password. And when I need to get to it, I can use their iOS or their Mac app, both of which are state-of-the-art, and they all support Apple's newest technology. So on my phone and iPad Pro, I can unlock 1Password with Face ID. On my Mac, on my desktop, I use a really strong password. On my MacBook Pro with Touch ID, I can use Touch ID. Agile Bits is staying on top of all of that stuff and keeping 1Password really well integrated because security shouldn't slow us down. 1Password is not just for individuals, though. They have accounts for teams and families. So I can share a vault with my spouse. We have access to shared logins, things like the utility company or our personal banking or you know the school website for the kids, things we both need access to. We can store and share. So if she resets a password, I have access to it and vice versa. We're not texting each other saying, oh, did you change that login? Oh, I need it. One password keeps it synced between the two of us. And the same at work. And with work, I can have multiple vaults set up. So my co-founder and I, Mike, we can share Cernit logins. And then we can share Cernit logins with our sales manager or our administrative assistant. They don't need access to everything, but we can give them discrete access to things they need to access. Head over to onepassword.com slash MPU to learn more, and you can sign up for a free 30-day trial while you're there. And when you do sign up, you'll get 20% off. Once again, that's onepassword.com slash MPU. You know, as I was listening to you talk about what you've got in your day one journal, it's just like a completely sane and rational way to use the application, which is ex- exactly what we'd expect from Mr. Hackett, right? <laughs> uh, for me, it's like an experimentation thing. <laughs> you know, I guess that's the best way to put it. Um, but I guess the starting point for my journal would be the the little problem I had deciding between paper and digital uh, for a lot of my journal. I actually uh, put in the Slack a couple pictures for you of recent days in my journal and the written one. And... Um, uh, so I've always had this idea of a written journal. I do like it. Even though I'm the guy who wrote the book Paperless, I like the idea of a little book I can write things in. Mm-hmm. And I wasn't sure exactly how that would be. I listened to The Pin Attic with, you know, um, you know Brad and, and Mike, which always is a threat to your wallet. Worse than Mac Power <laughs> users, I almost think. But, but anyway, so they, you know, over the time they had, they had convinced me to buy a few fancy pens and a few fancy notebooks and, and I'd been playing with them in different formats, but there's also the digital side of me. And if you go back to that live episode we recorded in Chicago, I did a whole segment with Mike about that, like good notes is really great. And I, I published the PDFs of those pages before, uh, or I'm sorry, right after that episode, um, aired, Mm -hmm. Uh, but I have not given up the Omni Graffle files for that. I am going to pledge that here, so they'll be up by the time the show publishes. Uh, so if you want to download my source files for that, um, I use a custom font, so you may have to change some fonts around. But but yeah, I'll, I'm happy to share those things. And and they were really cool pages that I made uh, as a daily kind of tracking planner that you could use out of Good Notes, and just like Stephen was talking about, you could share the image to to day one. You, you can export easily from GoodNotes as image. Day one accepts that. And then you've got a cool way to import your digital diary into your your, di- your, uh, your diary app, which is cool. Uh, and I, I don't think day one's pen tools are super great. You know, it's GoodNotes run circles around it. Definitely. I agree. But, but I still had this thing about the paper, and I wasn't sure what it was. And it's interesting because while we were in Chicago, I spent an afternoon with Mike before we recorded the show even. And, and I said, yeah, I really like the paper, but I also like the convenience of the digital. And he's like, oh, you have the wrong kind of paper. And he's like, while I, was, while I was there, he literally like opens my iPad for me, and we order what is called a Rhodia web notebook. Mm-hmm. And I don't even know what they do with this paper and these Rhodia books. They must dip it in unicorn tears or something. But <laughs> when you take a fountain pen and write on these pages, it is 
it is a uh, if if the word sumptuous can be applied to pen to paper, it is. It's just a very nice writing experience. Wow. And as soon, as soon as I got one, I'm like, oh, this is this feels really great. And there's something about um, for someone like me who spends literally all his time making my living doing digital things to step away. And um, and I think part of it is like you know I, I inherited a desk that's been passed down in my family for generations. It's this drop down desk, you know, from Rhode Island that, you know, it's, I don't know how old it is and I'm sure it's not very valuable, but it's just this, I have these fond memories of my mother with it. And so I've got it in my fancy new office. So I've got a digital desk and a writing desk. And I, I like pushing the de- the chair over to the writing desk and opening up that book. And, and as soon as I got this fancy paper, the good notes battle was lost, you know, because I'm like, oh, wait, this is really good. And so the way I use a paper notebook is it's almost like a log. And that's why I sent you those pictures. I don't, I don't really want to publish them, you know, at some point, maybe I will, but I don't even know what's on the pages I sent Stephen. I may have just implemented, implicated myself (laughs) in something. I don't know. But the, uh, but you know, so I have a running log. I wake up in a day. I like to think of something I'm thankful every day when I wake up. It's just a nice way to start the day on a positive note. I'm looking at the page I sent to Stephen and that day I was thankful for the silent alarm on my Apple watch (laughs) because I remember my wife had been up very late and I had to get up early to work and I'm like, Oh, this is nice. I can wake up without waking her up. But, but the, um, so just to give you an example of how non heavy this journal can be, you know, that was what I was thankful for that day. But Mm -hmm. I keep a running log of what I did by start times and a running log of things that I finished during the day. And then uh, that's on one page. And on the other side of the page, I just, I write down little diary entries as things happen. If I get off the phone with somebody and, and we and something was said that made me feel good or bad or whatever. Maybe I'll write it down there. At the end of the day, I might log a little bit of what what happened that day or something that made me happy or sad. And you know, I just spend a few minutes on it. And really, it's just a few minutes. That that was one of the first things I learned when I started this because in my head I was thinking it was going to take hours a day to maintain this ha- this uh, habit, and it doesn't. It's like fifteen minutes, really. Um, the process of logging what you do takes more time in a way because you have to remember to do it. But once you build the habit and I've got the the book literally open to the side of my desk all day. So I, I write that stuff down. So then the question becomes, well, if you're going to do that, what do you need day one for? And the answer is really, I love the idea of digital preservation. And honestly, I don't want to put everything down with my fancy pen and paper. There's other stuff that kind of fits more naturally in day one for me. So in addition to the paper book, I've got a a healthy list of different journals in day one. And the thing that's interesting between me and Steven is while he's just got a few, like I said, he's the rational one amongst us. I have a bunch (laughs) and some of them have a lot of entries and some of them have very few, but I like having them available to me. And if I want to go back and read and do some navel gazing, um, having them set in these different journals makes it easy. When, when day one first showed up, you know, back 10 years ago when it was a new thing, uh, there was just one journal. And eventually they added the ability to add additional ones. This is one of the reasons why I recommend subscribing to the app so you can get kind of these unlimited journals. But um, so just to give you an idea, um, so I've got one, you know, the basics are I've got one called Personal, Legal, and Max Sparky. And when events happen of consequence in relation to those things, that's often where I'll, I'll spend some time writing some things down. And in some ways it is like, you know, you know, turning off the, the introspective part and just kind of the practical part of it, having those really helps me like on the Max Sparky thing. When I finish a screencasting session, I will take notes into a day one note, you know, like right now I am working my tail off on keyboard maestro. It's going to be out soon. I hope. And every recording session, I take notes about what I did, what I didn't like, you know, and then later I can go back and review those. And if I need to make edits, I can just take a look at the day one entry because I use tags and all sorts of other stuff to find what happened with that session and what needs to be fixed. Um, I'm starting to um, bring other people on to help me with some of the stuff on these uh, videos. And I'm thinking that those entries will also be of help when I'm communicating with others. So um, I use that not necessarily for the navel gazy parts we were talking about, but just as a practical tool. Um, uh, Another one that I have, I like you talked earlier about quotes. I just have a quotes journal. And every time I hear a funny quote, 
um, I write it in there and it could be something that's really, you know, heavy and helpful. It could be something spiritual. Uh, the other day we had my niece who is like two and a half years old, uh, on my daughter's shoulders and she saw a fountain and she just screamed water at the top of her lungs. <laughs> and I thought that was so funny. And I, I didn't have it recorded, but I did just write a quote down water exclamation point, you know? So I, you know, I, I write down all kinds of little things in there. Um, I'm a big fan of, and this is more productivity nonsense for people who don't want to hear it, but I'm a, a big fan of just thankfulness in general. I think it's, it, you can spend a lot of your life being angry about, you know, injuries received or, or you can just be thankful for the good things that happen to you. So I'd like to write those down whenever I think about them. I want to, you know, I want to grow that wolf instead of the other one. Sure. And, and the, uh, so I, I have a thankfulness journal and the thing I find about that is because I've separated these into so many different journals, sometimes when, you know, I'm feeling sorry for myself, I'll just go read that one. I'm like, oh yeah, I'm doing pretty good. You know? And, um, I have a meditation one, which is also, uh, not introspective as much as just a log. And just when I have trouble with meditation, you know, I kind of write down thoughts about what, what went wrong or what was hanging me up. Um, I have a travel one where I, I, you know, cause you could diary all your travel in your personal journal, but why not put it in its own journal? Because it's fun to go back and read what you thought when you were traveling. Yeah. I, I can see the, I can see the benefit there. You know, like my main one has, you know, 1500 entries. And so yeah. <laughs> going through there and day one does have a search, a search tool, but going through there is potentially, you know, difficult and you may lose some things. So I like the idea of having specific ones. You're, you're almost using them as like a tagging or filtering system. Yeah. You could solve all this with tags for whatever reason. I, I think a little bit of it is aspirational. When I open day one and I see all those journals, sometimes it triggers entries. Hmm. Okay. The, um, I have one called paper journal. So like those pages I just sent you, are out of that. So at the end of every day, after I write a journal, I go ahead and just snap a picture of them and they get saved to the paper journal inside day one. And so I can, you know, future me, if the notebooks burn up or if I lose them or whatever, I can go back and take a look at them again. Uh, they're not searchable like they would be if I wrote them in good notes, but you know, it's good enough for me. And really on the paper, the, I guess the point I didn't make on the paper is I like the process. I think that there, there's really not a good reason I mean, if, if you're not somebody who gets the good feels from writing on paper with a pen, then you should absolutely do that with good notes and use those templates I'm about to post. Yeah. And, and I think that's part of this sort of practice is sometimes it is about what comes out of it, but a lot of time it's just about doing it, right? So the process is an important thing. I, I don't think that's, that's something at all to uh, consider secondary. Yeah. Another one well, I ha have, have is have called... We discovered, have we discovered that I'm the hippie one? Is that what's happened today? I think so, man. I it think feels so. very strange. I think a lot of things have changed since you've joined the Mac Power users because <laughs> now I have wildlife attacks in my yard and, mm -hmm. you know, and things going on. And I don't know. I don't know. We're slowly becoming each other. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Another one I have because I'm not done yet. <laughs> oh, I know. I'm looking at this at the screenshot, just hoping that you skip some. I, I, I will. I already have skipped a few. Uh, but uh, another one that I use that is really helpful for me is just personal business. Like I had to get on the phone with the insurance lady and I just write down a few notes what happened there. And um, I have it tagged. Like not only do I have these different journals, I also actively use tags. So, you know, health insurance has a tag and and then if I in the future have a question about this, I can go look it up. Uh, and then I've got a, I've got this one I got from Sean Blanc. Uh, I think it was an email or a blog post he did fairly recently. Uh, he has one called Thoughts On. He does it in Ulysses. He just has a, a log in Ulysses where, you know, wherever he has thoughts on some subject. I thought that's a good idea. I haven't written anything in it yet, but I thought, why not? You know, when I get when I have some, when I do have something heavy, I want to write about and, you know, thoughts on whatever, you know. Did Hans shoot first? That would be a very short entry for me, but I, I do have thoughts on it. The, the whole body just says yes, period. Yeah. <laughs> and then and the one I've had for a long time, one of the first ones I made, which I find very useful, is just called Mistakes Made. <laughs> and, uh, mm. Because I make a lot of mistakes and I uh, try to learn from them. So I, I thought next time I find myself beating myself up about something, just write it down, you know, turn it into a lesson. And I go back and read them once in a while. 
And I make mistakes on everything. I make mistakes as a lawyer, as a geek, as a dad, as a husband. No end to that. That's that one's got quite a few entries. <laughs> that's the that's the human condition, man. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, but it, it's nice. Um, I feel like externalizing that stuff uh, for me is therapeutic. So, Def- so I've got definitely. all these entries, and and so I use day one aggressively. So the answer to the question: Why do you have paper plus this stuff? Well, the paper is like to me almost like a running log of the day, and quite mm-hmm. often when I look at the things I did during the day, that will spark some other entry into the journal. And I don't, I do not spend hours a day at this stuff, although it may sound like it. Um, a lot of these journals don't get entries every week or even every month. Uh, but, but the paper stuff goes every day and then other interesting things get sparked out of that. And I, uh, and I, I think I found my balance. Like when we went to that live show, I really wasn't sure what I was supposed to be doing between good notes and paper notebooks and all that. And, and for me, I found the answer. Yeah, I, I think it's you can mix and match these things. And as we yeah. get into the features of day one, it makes importing images so easy. I mean, it's trivial. And so you can, you know, yeah, it's not like perfectly scanned or you don't you haven't run OCR on it, but you can tap on the image and, you know, zoom into it and you can read your writing pretty easily. Your handwriting, by the way, I think it's the first time I've actually seen it is a thousand times better than mine. So Oh really? I thought you were gonna say terrible. No, it's <laughs> I love it. It's so uh Mine is awful, um, but uh, you can zoom in and pan around and see everything. So I don't necessarily worry about about that. You know, I'm not scanning. If I do it in a field notes notebook or in you know some other notebook, I'm not scanning those pages. I'm just taking a picture with my iPhone and moving on, and and that's enough to capture it for me. Oh, and, and that's another thing, by the way. If you're toying with paper and you're saying, "Well, I can't do that because my handwriting's terrible," this is another thing. You're writing this for yourself. I, I really think that's probably a good standpoint to start this out and it's okay you know get over it Mm -hmm. i mean you don't have to maybe you just hate handwriting you want to do digital you know there's some great tools in a lot of ways digital superior um but but don't let handwriting stop you for a lot of people myself included this is really the only time i write things by hand i mean my work is entirely online you know i'm not filling out paperwork (laughs) very often and so there there are some days the only thing i actually write with a pen are these daily logs. And it keeps me in the habit of that. It, I think it, it, may, it lets me practice my handwriting, which again, not something I don't get to use all the time. And I, I kind of like that part of it. There's a whole other piece of it I don't want to get into today. It's a, probably another podcast about how I take data out of OmniFocus and, and some of it gets dedicated into these notebooks because I find that, that that's a useful way for me to really handle the big rocks. But the, um, uh, you know, it's just, there's something to all this and it's worth trying out. And um, I think we should get into day one, though, because, uh, you know, when we started outlining the show, we were going to call it the journaling show. And as the outline filled in and we realized, oh, wait a second, we're going to spend almost all the time talking about day one. Let's call it the day one show. So I think right off the bat, and we've talked about this a little bit but to kind of put a finer point on it. The the boundary for when you go from a paper journal to digital, I think that's different for everybody. For me, the reason day one becomes the receptacle of all of this, even if I'm handwriting notes, is that I can intermix different types of media, as we'll get into. So a lot of my journal entries, I'd probably say the bulk of them, have at least one photo attached. Either that be a photo of a paper notebook or a picture of the thing my kid made at school that day or our trip to the park or you know whatever. Being able to kind of bring in text and photos together is really why I started using day one so long ago. And you just can't do that very easily in the analog world. Like, I guess you could become a scrapbooker, but most of us don't have those skills or that time. So this allows me to build a set of entries up over time using different different types of things. Um, I'm, I'm going to have a link in the show notes to an article by Paul Main, the, uh, the founder of Day One. This, this interview is from 2012 now, but I came across it in our research. And he, I think he does a good job talking about this sort of line and like when you end up, uh, you know, moving to a digital tool, what that can what that can bring for you. Uh, I think it's great, even though it's you know seven years old. I think he's still spot on. So I think that's a, that's a good place to start if you're struggling with that idea of when do I put this into an app. Yeah, and I have no doubts that most of our listeners 
are going to have no interest in the paper notebook thing. I probably spent too much time on that already because, <laughs> uh, because I mean, if you're listening to Mac power users, you get digital and day one, as we're going to get to in the show, it just makes it really easy. I mean, using your voice, mm-hmm. using your pen, using your keyboard, whatever, uh, to make yeah. entries. And in a lot of ways yeah. they're searchable, they're permanent, you know, there, there's a lot to like about that methodology. The way it's laid out is by date, but you can associate all this metadata, so you can surface things yeah. later. You know, I think I think some listeners will know that um, I've, I've written about this in the past. I carry a Field Notes notebook with me basically all the time, and the what goes in there is all sorts of different things. But I scan them when I fill them up, and uh, I keep them on a shelf in my office, and I scan the PDFs and keep them on my in my notes application, but. Even scanning them, if I need to find something in there, you know, I kind of got to f- go to the file with that date range and then look for it. Where with day one, because it's digital, I can, I can search it, I can filter things out, and it's a lot easier to kind of dive back into the, the back catalog. W- with your scanning, I mean, you just run it through a scanner, or how do, how do you digitize those field notes? Yeah, so I just, I have a, like, an El Cheapo flatbed scanner I bought, maybe like Office Depot or something in college. And I just, you know, it takes a little time. I have one to do this afternoon, actually. It takes maybe 10 or 15 minutes. Put it on the flatbed, close the flatbed, scan a page, flip the page, put it back on. And uh, I save a bunch of PDFs in, um, like I said, in notes. And I name the files, the dates I use the notebook. So, for instance, this one that I'm going to scan this afternoon, which just happens to be on my desk, I used from... March 11th to April 3rd. So I filled it up over the course of those weeks and I'll name the file that so I can go back later and find them. And then I store the actual physical notebook on a shelf in my office because I'm a borderline hoarder and like pretty notebooks to look at all the time. Now, do you, do you write down like journal entries in that or what do you, what do you record in there? Yeah, sometimes it is historically like the bulk of them were meeting notes, you know, I mean, Back when I had a job that had a lot of meetings, everything, you know, every, I'd write down everything in these meetings and then digitize it later into OmniFocus or emails or whatever. Um, but it can be things as little as, hey, you know, this morning I went to Home Depot and needed three or four things. I don't want to clog up my task system with that. So I can just make a little paper list. Really anything that I need to write down. So there's no real filter as far as what goes into them. So if you flip through one, it could be, you know, now like this this one here, for instance, just looking through it, it has several of these daily log entries I'm doing now. Uh, it has notes from a talk that I went to, someone spoke, and I, I thought it was really interesting. I took notes. Uh, edit notes for Mac Power Users episode 476 are in here, some things I needed to clean up in the edit. Uh, you know, working with our uh, administrative assistant for a call, some things I wanted to make sure I went over with her. There's a sketch in here for something I'm working on, like, just whatever, yeah. you know, whatever I need to uh, I need to save. There's no filter as what goes in here. And so that's why I scanned them because they're so disjointed. Uh, it's kind of fun to see the history through that. Yeah, because I use Field Notes as well. But for me, it's very practical. It's just they go in my pocket. They get destroyed over the course of a month or two. And like if I sit down and somebody asks me to follow up on something, I just use it as a, a paper capture and mm-hmm. then when I go home or to the office, I uh, I look through that page, whatever's in there, I create OmniFocus tasks or whatever with it. And then I just draw a line through the page saying, okay, I captured or did dealt with this. And then when I get the end of the book, I throw it in the trash and open a new one. <laughs> it's mm-hmm. not, I don't scan them or anything, but it sounds to me like you use them more as a traditional journal than I do. For me, they're very, in fact, I tear pages out all the time. If somebody wants some information, I'll, you know, I'll write it down and just tear the page out of the book and give it to them. Yeah, yeah, I don't think I've ever done that. That's that's, that's horrifying. An animal, <laughs> like you know, as as we've established, you're just clearly the classier one of the two of us. There you go. I'll put a, a link in the show notes to my the shelf in my office. So you can see them. It's a nice picture. I'd love to see that. This episode of the Mac Power Users is brought to our friends over at Text Expander. Text Expander is updated. We've got version 6.5 for Mac OS and 2.0 for Windows, and they sport a new visual editor for snippets. That's right. If you want to make snippets with uh, cool 
uh, tokens inside of them. It's now easier than ever to do that with Text Expander. The new editor makes it easier to make fill ins, dates, and do date math, use nested snippets, and more. And I use these all the time. It is so great. You can create a snippet that will grab the contents of your clipboard or the current date, or you can even fill it in. Super useful as you use Text Expander. You can use this to insert words, phrases, forms, templates, and more with just a couple of key clicks everywhere as you type. Take control of your time and productivity by letting Text Expander handle your repeated typing tasks. Love telling everyone about Text Expander? Join the affiliate program and earn a little extra. And the best part is show listeners get 20% off their first year. I love this fill-in feature, Stephen. I do my billing for my legal practice, and every month I have this note I send out to clients. And using these fill-in snippets, I'm able to have like check the box items to say like if you need me to send you a bill by paper, you know, with a stamp, I can do that. Um, if I have a section in there for fill-in, but it's a large section, you have like a, a one-line fill-in or a large section, and then I can write a personal note to the client in it. But I've automated all the pieces of this that can be automated. And all of that's done in a web form because Text Expander works on the web as well. Anyway, it's a great program. So much more than simple text expansion. Visit textexpander.com slash podcast to learn more about Text Expander. Let them know you heard about it here on the Mac Power Users and get yourself that 20% off for your first year. Thank you, Text Expander, for all of your support of the Mac Power Users. So let's get into the basics of day one. It is uh, basically a suite of applications. They're on iOS, they're on the Mac, they're on Android. One thing I really like about day one is they they tailor these apps to the platform they're on. So for instance, the Apple Watch version does some some cool stuff that, you know, ne- not necessarily elsewhere, that they're tailored to each device, right? Yeah. So do, do you use the Apple Watch for entry? No, not, not very okay. often. I mean, it's, it's there. <laughs> okay. I mean, so you can capture text with Siri and you can also catch capture an audio note and uh, just record your voice. Um, And I do want to point out this audio recording in day one is probably one of my favorite features of the um, subscription model. If you buy the subscription version, it does automatic transcription. And this transcription is wicked smart. So like, uh, you know, I talked earlier about the thoughts on journal. Like when I feel like talking about something that I've got on my mind, I can literally just record my thoughts into an audio recording and you press one button and it transcribes that into text. You know, as somebody who is very much into voice dictation, I cannot get over how spooky accurate day one does this text transcription. I believe they're just using the built-in iOS transcription engine. It's the same thing you get with just press record, but it's really good. And it's a great way to capture your diary entry with your own voice, but at the same time have written text that you can search. That's really cool. And if you're somebody who, you know, writing or even typing is is slow or or uh, something that you can't, you can't do from like an accessibility perspective, this unlocks some some new ways to enter things into the app. I think it's a really cool feature. Or if you're just somebody who says, I don't want to sit there and write things down, or I don't yeah. want to sit down at the end of the day and type. You know, I've been mm-hmm. typing all day. This is a great entry point to getting a journaling habit going because, say, look, you don't have to do any of that stuff. Sit down with your phone, open day one, press the record button, and just spill your guts for a few minutes, and then you, you've done a you've done a journal entry. Another thing you mentioned earlier is on iOS, they have support for the Apple Pencil and other styluses to, to draw. And so you can sketch or, you know, uh, I've, I've seen some examples online of people doing the sketch note thing, where if you're in a talk or in a meeting and you, it's a way to to capture that data. It's really a really cool habit. I wish I had the skill for it. Uh, you could do that in something like, like day one as well. And then it just saves that as an image and it gets synced around to the other devices. Yeah. And you don't have to do that in day one. I mean, you can use an application like GoodNotes that Steven's doing and, and save it in as well. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, one uh, a feature that I don't use very often, but in, in prep for the show, I've actually uh, turned one of these things, uh, these things on is day one on iOS comes with three different widgets. There's the activity feed on this day and nearby entries. So the activity feed is this bigger 
feature in the iOS app where it just monitors uh, your location in the background. And I have it turned on as a reminder to write at the end of the day. It said, hey, you've been to five locations today. Um, and it can give you some prompts for writing about, about your day. I think it's a really nice reminder to sort of capture that stuff if you want to. Yeah. Uh, so there's an iOS widget that basically it surfaces that all the time. So I can see that you know, this morning I had to return a rental car from a weekend trip. I came home. I had a run to the store. Now I'm home again. And it just gives me little breadcrumbs, if you will, throughout my day. And it's just right there in the iOS uh you know, widget view, and I can tap on one of them and uh, and then go into the app, uh, which is pretty, pretty nifty, I think. Yeah, super powerful. And it, once again, all this stuff is just easing the on-ramp to someone that wants to, to try and do this stuff. It gives you easy prompts to work off of. Mm-hmm. Uh, it has the on this day feature, which I, I just love in day one, as, I guess, as the resident historian surface things that I, I wrote on this day in the past. So right now I've got uh, one from today, one from four years ago, one from five years ago. And I can tap on that. I can see it's a little picture and I can go right to that entry in the the day one application itself. And then the last one is nearby entries. So if you have metadata turned on for the location where you are journaling, you can see those. And so, you know, most... Well, I'm sitting at home right now. Most of the time if I open this, I'm at home. But I can go in here and say, okay, this shows my home address. It has 131 entries, and it opens that filtered view within the application. I think this would be really potentially really interesting combined with your travel journal. So you could – if you say that you go to – say you're not David Sparks and you only go to Disney every three or four or five or six or seven years, not every two days – then, you know, you're at Disney and, and it's an easy way to see, oh, this is the pictures I took and saved. This is what I wrote last time I was here. Again, kind of a neat way to get back into those archives. Yeah. Or even like we're going to go up to San Jose uh, in a couple months and like we don't go there but once a year. And it'd be kind of fun to take a look at nearby entries from San Jose. Yes. And speaking of Disney, I have a real problem. I have not been there since before I went to Chicago. I'm going through withdrawals right now. <laughs> it's a very David Sparks problem. Oh, man. Uh, it's to tough. It is tough. I've I just been so busy. <laughs> I haven't had time. And so I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do. Got to get there at some point. I think I'm going to have to do a work day and just like find a day mm -hmm. where I don't have any calls or anything and, and just go up there and, and get um, some work done. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I like it. I know the secret places. Some of us just go to a coffee shop, you know, co-working space. You're at Disney. That's cool. We lead different lives. The, ch the challenge is if you've got a client on the line and the steamship whistle goes off in the background, mm -hmm. that, you're that's busted. Rough. Yeah, exactly. I've, I've been on the other end of those calls. Yes, I'm like, I, I actually I, did I, one of those with you once. <laughs> I know I where you it. are. Uh, you, can't, you can't hide it from me. I, let's talk a little bit about... Uh, an entry itself. So we've talked about journals and some yeah. of the features of the app, but the heart of all of this is just like the single humble journal entry. So was, what are the component blocks that we can use here? So, I mean, when you create a new entry, they've got a title or headline that you can put on each entry. Always a little pressure for me, to be honest, you know, what am I going to title this? Mm. And then, um, and then you hit return and you can just start typing text. The way I normally do it is I, I, um, put the title in at the end. Um, okay. but just go in and you put stuff in there. You can base it on a photo. There's a whole bunch of different inputs you can put into it. Like, uh, you can take a picture, you can grab an image from your library, you can record audio, like I said earlier, and that audio can be turned into transcription if you want. Mm -hmm. now, I got, now I'm going to go look in the app here. There's so many. There's more than that, though. Yeah, and I, th I think they've said that they they want to do things like video in the future. So I have a Dropbox folder of like just little video snippets of my kids doing funny things. All of those I will import into day one at some point in the future because it, it kind of lives with the other stuff I have there. Yeah, you can also grab from your activity feed. Mm -hmm. So like if you took pictures and like one of the things I like about this is like often when we do um, events where I'm with a bunch of, of my nerd friends, I'll take a picture. It's my uh, social media of one, you know, <laughs> kind of thing. I take right. it. Yeah. And when I go in and I just I grab from the activity feed, uh, it will get the pictures we took when we were out to dinner together. And then not only will it create a new uh, entry, journal entry, it'll give me the option to date the entry as of the time of the pictures. So it's great. 
it's huge for me. Very often I will do my sort of travel journaling after a trip. So like I'll come home, you know, I shoot with my iPhone, but also with a Sony camera, I'll import everything into photos, you know, and after all of that, I'll go through and pick the handful of photos I want to save into day one. And you drag a photo into it on the Mac or add one on iOS. And it says, Hey, do you want to adjust the metadata? Like you said, for this photo. And when you're traveling, you know, was that Monday or Tuesday or what restaurant was that? Well, the, the photo knows because of the GPS location and the, and the clock information. And it, it's easy to kind of fill that metadata with the metadata that's already in the image, right? So you don't have to go and like double dip all of that stuff, which yeah. is really clever. I use that feature all the time. I'll import an image and, you know, backdate it three or four days. Yeah. Very often. Yeah. That's nice. And, mm-hmm. um, and and it, it doesn't even have to be days later. It can just be earlier in the day. But it, it's nice having the um, the entries, especially when they're tied to photos, uh, tied to exactly the time the photo was taken at. And, and the the metadata is wide. I mean, there's so much you can do with this. We we mentioned tags already, but I think even if you're not necessarily a tags person, this app is a great place to use tags. Yeah, I can see that. I mean, we've we've talked about this. I just can't wrap my head around tags, but. Uh, it, they're there and they act as a filter across your journals if you want to. So you could have, you know, uh, a tag with your wife's name in it or something and yeah. see that across all your different journals, which is really, really neat. Huge ones we talked about, of course, location and date, perhaps the two most important ones for me. Uh, but a, a third one that really, I, at first I was like, why is this in here? But I kind of like that it is, is it can pull weather based on that date and location entry. So it can if I took that picture in San Jose last Tuesday, it can it can add the weather to the entry. And I really like that for travel, you know, because it helps build context. And some sometimes, at least for me, it can help bring that memory kind of alive. Like, oh yeah, it was like weirdly cold that day. Like, do you remember that? And like we we didn't have the kids jackets and we felt terrible or whatever it is. Uh, it can add sort of that that extra layer for me when, when going back and reviewing. And then you can go in and you can favorite your, uh, you know, various posts as well. And again, you could then go and search uh, for those favorites if that's something you want to do. I'm, like like tagging, I'm not a big favorite, favorite tour. I don't know what the yeah. <laughs> what that word would be. I'm not one to favorite things very often, like in photos or or other places. But it's there if if that it makes sense for how you how you work and how you organize things. So for for me, I I don't think I favorited any of my journal entries, and there's at least a thousand in here. Um, but what I use I use tags for. I talked earlier how some journals that are more like logs than like you know dear diary type journals. Like for instance, the personal business one. Um, if I have to call the phone company, I've got a phone company tag, you know, and so. So I use it for kind of those log type journals to allow me to drill into them deeper on specific topics or people. And, uh, and it's fine. They're, they're very easy to create and you don't see them unless you want to. So I think if you want to use day one as, as a type of running log type of application, uh, the tags can be quite useful. It's good advice. The, the other thing they do that's nice with the tags is they, they surface related tags. As soon as you start typing the, the, um, search, The search, you know, as soon as you start typing in a tag, the ability to find, if you already made the tag, the ability to find it or something close to it, if you're not sure what the name is, is very good. It's exactly what Apple should be doing with its own tags on iOS, honestly. Something that you do that I wish I had done, well, this this stuff just didn't exist when my kids were little, but uh, just taking the random pictures of the kids Mm -hmm. and journaling that with even just a few sentences and then um, and just capturing that picture, that's great. That that's so much more useful in my mind than just a a big photo library. Yeah, I mean, my photo library's got forty thousand things in it, and so this is a much smaller data set, a uh, you know highly edited, curated uh, collection, if you will. And even looking through here, like I see gaps, and I kind of want to go back through and fill them in. And again, I can use that metadata to backdate everything, so I don't have to do a bunch of manual stuff. You know, another thing I would have done if my kids were little right now is I would uh, record some conversations with them. Yes. 100%. And that would be a great place to do. Do you do that? I do. Uh, I record conversations with them, them singing, them talking and uh, cause they change so quickly. Yeah. yeah. And it's a, it's a fun way to, to 
see how much they've grown up. It's sad. Yeah. Sometimes, Before you know it, they just, they just want the car keys and some money, and then you can go back and listen <laughs> to those recordings and make yourself feel better. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's good. Dad, I need the Jeep. I need the Jeep, Dad. <laughs> but uh, let me record you asking that. No. <laughs> Not interested in that. <laughs> exactly. This episode of the Mac Power Users is brought to you by Warby Parker. Quality eyewear at a fraction of the usual price. Warby Parker was founded by four friends that believe that you should be able to easily buy glasses online. And you may be thinking, well... How do you buy glasses on the internet? That sounds tricky. Wilbury Parker has made it super easy with their free home try-on program. So you order five pairs of glasses and you can try them on for five days with no obligation to buy. Shipping is free and it includes a prepaid return shipping label. It could not be easier. Head on over to warbyparker.com slash macpowerusers to order your free home try-ons today. Warby Parker glasses start at just $95. That includes prescription lenses that include anti-glare and anti-scratch coatings, something that a lot of other places want to charge you more for. And if you're worried about blue light from your screens disturbing your sleep, blue light filtering lenses are also now available. I recently went through the home try-on kit, picked five glasses that I thought would look good, kind of fit my style, and I got to do a little fashion show for my family. My spouse and kids got to weigh in, and uh, we picked one together because I've learned over time that my taste is much better when other people are involved. You can also use their brand new Find Your Fit feature in the Warby Parker iPhone app. So if you have an iPhone 10 or later with Face ID, it uses the True Depth camera to map and measure key facial features. Then it recommends about 12 frames or so that are likely to be the best fit for your face. So if you're like me and you have a wider face, it'll filter out narrow ones that wouldn't fit very comfortably. It's really seamless. It takes just a few seconds and you get to try them on in this, this AR view. It's actually really cool use of this true depth camera technology. It's time to upgrade your glasses experience. Go to warbyparker.com slash macpowerusers to order your free home try-ons today. Once again, that's warbyparker.com slash macpowerusers. Thanks so much to Warby Parker for their support of this show and Relay FM. I let them pick my uh, my glasses with the robot, uh-huh. and my young adult daughter was very complimentary. She's like, oh, I like your new glasses. And I was just thinking, huh, I guess the robot's pretty smart. I didn't tell <laughs> her that, though. She thinks I picked them out, so I'm going to take credit. I would say take the credit. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, one of the things I like about day one, we talked about how many platforms it's on, but the data gets synced everywhere. So the entries I make quite often are on iPhone, but they're also on iPad. Um, I use it on the Mac as well. Uh, so er- everything is everywhere at all times. Like like I was talking, I keep getting to this personal business log because I was on the phone with the insurance lady the other day. But, you know, you just drop down from the menu bar, you type something in as you're finishing that conversation up. And now all of a sudden it's automatically on all of your devices. I like that. Yeah. And, and it is, for me at least, been really pretty bulletproof. I haven't had any sync issues with it. Uh, they, they've they had outages and stuff like everybody does. They did have a hard time uh, when they first announced this before you could use iCloud or Dropbox. I used the Dropbox sync for a long time. And they said, hey, we're going to move to this custom sync engine. It's going to let us do more things. I don't think they handled that transition as well as they could have. They had a lot of outages in the beginning. Their, their talking about it was confusing at times. But I will give them credit that they the service works well. It's worked well for me for a long time now. And I think they learned a lot about how to communicate with their customers. You know, no developer is perfect, but they've really done a good job in improving this since they've launched it. And so I've been paying for it, uh, the premium now for a while. And I really love that I can have an entry, create it on my phone. It's on my Mac within a few seconds. It's really nice. No, I mean, I mean, they started out as an app where you gave them some money and they gave you an app and they turned into a subscription app. And that is always misery for the developer. I had a developer friend tell me that that's the worst two months of his life <laughs> was the transition from, you know, paid for to subscription. And I think that's probably true for most of them. Uh, the one of the problems with this app was when they made the transition is they didn't have the encryption fully baked yet. But now it is. It's end to end encrypted. So um, you can feel 
I guess pretty safe putting your stuff in there. I, I don't worry about it too much. I don't put client data in mine, but the, um, but my own personal stuff, you know, I guess, you know, I, I'm not, you know, whenever you get in this discussion and it's cloud storage, I guess there's always some risk, but sure. Whatever. I, I get enough benefit out of it that I, that I'm willing to take that risk. Mm-hmm. And we have a, a link in the show notes to their into an encryption page. So you can see how it works. If you enable this day one, cannot see your data, uh, in, in your account. They just see a, a hashed encrypted blob. Uh, you do get a private key though. And so it's really important that you don't lose that. So my pro tip is I have saved my day one private sync key as a note in one password. <laughs> so it's it's safe and secure there. Uh, you don't. That's not something you want to save in day one because then if you lose it, you can't get in. You know, that circular problem. But uh, you can save that note. You don't need it unless you're setting up uh, an account from scratch. So for me, you know, I just created an, a new journal for quotes because I actually really liked, David, liked your idea about that. And I just made a new journal and it's synced all my devices already. So it's kind of a one-time thing. But I definitely recommend doing it for that $34 a year, $35 a year. Like I said, you get sync, uh, you get unlimited journals. So you can be like David and have uh, just a, a journal for for everything. Uh, you also <laughs> I'm gonna get... Make, I'm going to make a new one for every time I eat a Pop-Tart, just because you said that. <laughs> okay. How many Pop-Tarts are you eating? <laughs> I can't remember the last time I had one, but I, I, w- I was just thinking about it the other day. So I'm going to get one at some point in the future. I, I was suddenly... <laughs> I was only very worried about your breakfast diet. Um, You can, you totally can use, like you could download day one and use it, the basic, uh, just on your Mac if you want to. And that's enough for a lot of people, but I want to have everything synced. And that's the important thing for me. You get unlimited sync and and storage. So you don't have to worry about, oh, I've uploaded a thousand photos. You know, am I going to run into some limitation? There's no limitations on that. Uh, you also get some kind of pro nerdy features we're going to talk about in a little while, like uh, IFTTT integration. You get uh, dark mode on iOS and macOS, which I know a lot of people really love. That audio recording that you talked about earlier. And uh, new features will come to that premium level. So like they said, for me, what I'm really looking for is video support. I want to add just little uh, videos into day one, and that will come to premium users when they roll that out. And for me, yeah, $35 a year, it's it's not no money, but I use this app so much. It's one that I was happy to move over to because it means that they can continue to update and support this. And in just a couple of weeks ago, actually, they launched a, a, a new version of day one on the Mac version three and, um, you know, updated UI and new features and subscriptions let developers do that. And so... I don't want that for every app, but day one totally passes the muster for me of things that I am I'm willing to move to s- subscription for. No, th- this app has been in continual development the entire time I've been aware of it. That's not true for all, maybe even most apps that started out on iOS. Um, but these guys are definitely putting a lot of effort into making this the best possible application. Mm-hmm. And like you, I, I think this is a worthwhile subscription and, and part of it becomes a, um, you know, you build so much into it. Like if you start having lots of journals and lots of entries, you've locked yourself into a certain extent, but then you really haven't because they've got all these export mechanisms. You can get, you can always get your data out, I guess I would say, but, Mm -hmm. um, the convenience of the app, and I, I did look at some other options. I, I tried to take a real kind of beginner's mind approach to journaling when I decided to really seriously, uh, do it last late, late 2017, but, you know, day one is just such a leader in terms of all the features and the ecosystem they've built that it was really, at the end of the day, no question for me. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, like I said, we, ha- we have their those links to those documents on their support page. Uh, they also have in-app support, which not a lot of developers do. But if you have an issue, you can just chat with them in the application. So you don't have to go out to like a an email, you know, ticketing system or something like that. Uh, it's all just kind of baked in. That Day one's done a really good job of making sure that the polish is is all the way throughout, and uh, I give them a lot of credit for that. This app has been around for a long time, but it's one that continues to get better. And like we talked about earlier, continue to add support for things like Touch ID and Face ID for locking your uh, your journals on your iOS device. So if I hand somebody my iPad for something, they're not going to be scrolling through my journal because they yeah. don't have my face. 
hopefully. If they do have my face, then I guess I got bigger problems. But that extra security, for instance, is one reason I really like day one. And again, I'm happy to help help them maintain it for the long haul. Yeah, it's funny because, uh, you know, you're talking about how you put your uh, password in in one password. Mm-hmm. In addition, I put it in my I also put it in my one password, but I also put it in my wife's one password. It's like mm-hmm. we have a because I just feel like if for something goes wrong with my stuff or something goes wrong with me, uh, maybe she needs to get in there. I don't know. Um, yeah. Either way, uh, there's a lot more you can do with it. We haven't talked about it all. One of my favorite features, uh, hypothetically, because I've never actually done it, is you could print a book out of day one. So this is sort of in line with the like the photo printing you can do. You know, Apple's gotten rid of that, but they work with other companies now. Yeah. And so I haven't done this either, but I have seen um, uh, Sean Blanc, I believe, did it, and I've seen some samples of it. And it's really nice. So you go in and you can pick uh, like a whole journal, or you can pick just certain things and you lay it all out in the app. And then it gets uh, – you get a nice preview and uh, it gets um, – it gets printed and shipped to you. So it's a nice way if you want a physical thing, you know, say that you have your, your pop tart journal and you become famous for this as I'm sure you will. And in 15 (laughs) years, you know, uh, you're ready to, to launch your pop tart diary book. This is every pop tart event for the last decade and a half. Well, you could do that, which is a few taps on your iPhone, which would be pretty easy compared to how things used to happen when you were creating books. Yeah. I mean, I mean, pop tarts are an important subject. Now, what flavor are you in Pop Tart? Like? I don't eat Pop Tarts. Ever? Mm-mm. Oh yeah. Well, I used to eat them as a kid. I was I was a fan of the strawberry, not a fan of the chocolate. As a kid, I liked fruit flavors. You know, you yeah. don't s'more Pop Tart. Like I don't want s'more for breakfast. What is this? Yeah. Get out of I, get out of here. Uh, <laughs> well, we used to have them around when my kids were little, but they grew up, so we don't have them anymore. So I don't know. I guess this may be an an unanswered request for me. I, I think if I told my wife to buy Pop Tart, she would just like look at me and laugh and walk out of the yeah. room. Maybe you can try that for our feed, next feedback episode. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> um, but there, there's also with the day one, I, I like the idea of the books. It also makes me think, well, you know, for getting, setting aside Pop-Tarts, I do have a couple journals in here that might be interesting to print at some point. Uh, but, you know, we'll see. Um, uh, they've also got some automation stuff going on. Uh, they do integrate with IFTTT. If this, then that. Uh, we talk about that on the show quite a bit over the years. It's a web-based automation service, but because you've now got day one, you know, holding your library, it gives you some ability to add some automation. We talked about automation of journaling on the automators. This 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 episode, this uh, whole topic of journaling, frankly, intersects all of my podcasts. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, but on on automators, we talked about automating journal entry, and there's a lot of ways you can do that. One of the things we talked about in that episode is using something like drafts to create a template. Like you get to the end of the day and it gives you the prompts and that's a great way to get started journaling, by the way, you know, give yourself a couple questions to ask yourself of the day. You know, what what are three things I did today? What made me happy? What made me sad? You know, what's something funny my kids said, you know, just, you know, have a couple questions to answer every day and using day one, you could have that templated out. Mm -hmm. And then because day one is such a nice player on iOS, it'd be very easy to create an automated entry into day one with that. Yeah, and and there's a lot of things you can do uh, with that. So, like some of the examples on the if things in that website, you know, uh, some simple stuff like, hey, um, if you like a YouTube video, send a link to day one. You know, uh, if you post to Instagram, save it in here as well. But then there's like some more interesting things in here too. So, like today's weather reports. If you're doing something that's really important, you know, say you're doing some sort of work outside or research or something that could be a manual process. Well, if things, uh, if this and that could potentially you know, automate that for you. So there's, there's a ton of stuff on this website. And of course you can build your own. I really like the Strava rides and runs. So if I go for a bike ride, I get a copy of that data into day one. That's one uh, that, that I've used in the past, all sorts of stuff. And uh, if you have sort of this this itch uh, day one also has like command line tools that I have not spent a ton of time with, but I know some people have, and there's, there's just a lot of stuff you can do to get data into this in a more sort of civilized fashion than just writing it every single day. Or, or automated. Like, you know, it doesn't have to be the journal that you sit down and think about every day. Mm-hmm. It could be the journal that just works in the background and has data available for you when you need it. 
And um, I mean, day one tries to be all of those things. Yes. And and I think that is a benefit when you're doing something with a digital tool, right? Like a paper notebook can't be looking for photos you post on Instagram and they yeah. magically appear in there. Like, unless yeah. you're Harry Potter, that's not going to work for most of us. So leveraging its connectivity to save things for you is like a, a huge win when it comes to digital tools. Yeah, I was thinking like I could I could like take like Christmas present tags and like uh, glue them on to the pages and I'd have tags. <laughs> But it wouldn't it wouldn't work as well. It would well. be weird, that's for sure. Yeah, it would be. It would be. But not just data in, but you can also get data out. Very interesting with a one. Uh, not only can you print a book, uh, you can also just PDF export um, all your um, entries, and mm-hmm. uh, it's very nice. I mean, I've I've run that, and it looks nice. Um, have you played with any of those export? Like you can also do HTML if you want. Yeah. So I've played with the HTML, uh, export. So that is only on the Mac version and you just get a, a zip file, you know, in finder and you get a index.html so you can open it and it kind of turns your day one journal into a little, you know, self hosted web page complete with photos and everything else. That'd be a really nice way. You know, I was thinking about ways you could use this if you were, uh, using day one for some sort of content that you wanted to share, that would be like a really interesting way to to send it to somebody of like, yeah, just unzip this and, and open this. And then it's just in your browser. Right. Uh, so that's, that's pretty neat. I think, you know, maybe not as friendly as PDF, but potentially more useful in certain situations. It can also export JSON data. So you can import that into another day one account or uh, do other programmery things with it. I am not a programmer, uh, but I did download this. It's like, yep, cool, that works. Uh, <laughs> it's it's the the nerdiest export uh, possible, I guess, but uh, is available if you want to to move it into some other tool. Yeah, and then you can do uh, plain text, which you get a zip with uh, a big text file, and then you have in that text you have references to photos, and they're included in a separate photos folder. So even though it says plain text, you're also getting your images out. Uh, and I assume that that would work with the other attachment types as well. I think all this is important to think about because even though I've used day one for what it is, eight years or something, at some point I may want to move elsewhere or at some point, you know, they may wind down as a company. I don't want my data stranded in here. We, we talk about this with notes apps all the time, right? Like, what if all my stuff is in Evernote and that ship finally sinks? Then you have ways out. And I think day one has done a good job at, at making this as accessible as possible. For most people, a PDF would be plenty. And I think that that's probably where I would start if you're looking at getting data out of it. Yeah. I mean, I look at this as a great tool while it lasts, I guess if it, you know, in the, if at some day in the distant future, it stopped working, I'd be okay. Just printing it all to PDF and having it. Uh, something was interesting to me was Mike, uh, when we interviewed him at the live show, talked about how he like shreds all his old books. He doesn't even keep them around at all. I do like having the reference of them and, um, and I do get some wisdom out of reading them or, or seeing, you know, give myself some sanity once in a while to go back and look to where my head was at some point. Um, but this is a, this application, I don't think you need to be afraid of it, with the export means they've got, you could get, if you decided, let's say the company's doing fine, but you just decide you don't want to pay $35 a, a year anymore for this. You could export everything to PDF, shut the account down and you'd be just fine. Uh, absolutely. And it's important when you're talking about years and memories. Yeah, exactly. Let's take a minute. I want to thank our sponsor, and that's our friends over at Squarespace. This episode is brought to you by Squarespace. Uh, there's this thing called the World Wide Web. You should probably be on it, and Squarespace is the way to do that. So make your next move with Squarespace. Squarespace lets you easily create a website for your next idea with a unique domain and award-winning templates and more. So maybe you want to create an online store, a portfolio, or a blog. Maybe you just had a baby, or you're getting ready to have a baby or get married. Go over to Squarespace, because it's the all-in-one platform that lets you do just that. There's nothing to install and no patches to worry about. No upgrades needed. You don't have to worry about any of that stuff. Squarespace has got it covered. They have award-winning 24-7 customer support if you need any help. They let you quickly and easily grab a unique domain name, and all of those award-winning templates are beautifully designed for you to help show off your great ideas. I was running Max Sparky through a very complicated system for a long time to publish that website, and then one day I had something go wrong that wasn't my fault. 
but it was still like hours and hours of my life to get fixed. And I realized I don't want to do this anymore. And at that point, I signed up for Squarespace account and moved MaxSparky.com over there. That was like, I don't know, at least five years ago. And I've been a happy paying customer ever since. It just works. I love it. Uh, I've made changes to the design. Uh, as the iPhone and the iPad became more popular, Squarespace gave me a responsive design website. So when people look at my site, whether whatever device they're looking on, it looks fine. Um, as I've added... Um, YouTube. And as I added the learn.maxsparky site, it all just worked hand in glove with my blog over at squarespace.com. I've just been really happy with the service. One of my favorite stories about Squarespace was when they had that big storm in New York City years ago. Um, the, the employees for Squarespace were literally carrying um, jugs of gasoline up the stairs of the building to power a generator to keep everything going. These guys, Amazing. <laughs> yeah, these guys aren't messing around. They want your blog to be beautiful, to look good, and to always be up. And I've just been very happy as a Squarespace customer for years. You can too. Squarespace plans start at $12 a month, but you can get a trial with no credit card required by going to squarespace.com slash MPU. When you decide to sign up, use the offer code MPU to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain and to make us look great. And we always like looking great. Uh, once again, that's squarespace.com slash MPU and code MPU to get 10% off your first purchase. Thank you, Squarespace, for all of your support. Squarespace, make your next move, make your next website. So I think we've covered the ins and outs of day one, but there are other digital solutions that we wanted to, to mention before, uh, before heading out today. Yeah. I think the simplest one is just a folder full of text documents. You know, you could organize these by dates really easily. I actually played with this for a while, but I just quickly realized that images were just a huge part of how I journal. And so some, an app like Day One or something else was required beyond just, uh, you know, a plain text or a markdown document. But I mean, even then you could solve the image problem by just having like with a hazel rule on your Mac just has the ability to sort documents into subfolders based on date and just make it so anything you throw in that folder, images, movies, whatever, uh, just drop it into folder-based dates. Um, I, I looked at that too for a while. I mean, when I realized that I enjoy the paper stuff, I got thinking, well, do I need day one? And actually I do because all the power that it has is something that I want. And honestly, $35 a year is trivial uh, compared to the other stuff I blow money on, <laughs> you know, but the, uh, uh, but the, uh, but you know, it's just, it's just worth it to me. The other one was too much of a hacky thing and it, it, it mm -hmm. almost was an analog book in a lot of senses because you didn't have ability to search through it and have tags and all the great stuff we like about day one. Of course you could get a lot of that in something like Apple notes or Evernote or bear or whatever, insert your text editor here. Yeah. Or Ulysses is another one people use for that. You know, they create, yeah. you can create a journal in Ulysses. Yeah, absolutely. For, for me, and it just maybe just me, I want my journal stuff separate from notes, just like organizationally. Yeah. You know, Apple Notes is for one type of data. Day one is for a very different type of data. But if you're already using Apple Notes or Evernote or something else, you can just create a new folder and just start there. You don't have to move to a specialized app unless you run into a need that notes or whatever doesn't meet. And we, I think both of us would agree that there's nothing wrong with this. I mean, I, although we've talked a lot about day one in this episode, I think use with what, what whatever scratches the itch for you. But mm -hmm. uh, I, I really like the, there's something about day one when you have all these journals and tags and things and you bring it together in one place the other thing that or the other reason why I've rejected those options for myself is there's something about my own headspace when I open day one. And I, I don't know. I know this is I'm not supposed to be hip anymore, but uh, having that stuff in a different application triggers different things for me. And I think I get it, it makes me more likely to keep the habit going. Just like having a nice pair of gym shoes makes it easier to go to the gym. It doesn't mean you're going to go to the gym, but it makes it easier. <laughs> That's right. Uh, there are some some other apps. I think there are four that are, are worth considering. One is called Journey. Uh, it has apps basically on every platform you can imagine. It uh, it kind of looks like day one. Like this blue color is very popular, I guess, very soothing color, right? It's the <laughs> color of, of messages. And it's just a popular hue. That just sort of made me laugh. 
Uh, it syncs using Google Drive, which is unique amongst these. So, you know, insert your feelings about Google Drive here, but uh, it's not using a custom sync engine. It's just putting data there. Uh, there's no subscription. It's $19 basically to unlock all the features, and then you're up and running. One thing that Journey has that I think is somewhat unique is it has uh, a bunch of different template types. So it can do some prompting and things that uh, some of these other apps, including day one, don't do or don't do to this extent. Journey is that sort of its hook that it has this templating thing you can use. So uh, that's worth looking at if you don't want a subscription, but you still want apps everywhere syncing, but it does sync with Google Drive. That does trigger one uh, idea. If you're listening to this and you're not sure what prompts you want, go on a Google Images search and just type diary prompts, and you're going to get so many. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> everybody's sharing their bullet journals. We didn't even talk about bullet journals. I, we'll save that for That's really not Mac Power Users territory, but it's, it is, uh, that's a whole thing going on right now. But oh, all it's that's, a whole world. <laughs> all that stuff can be done digitally. And um, mm-hmm. sometimes I will go look at other people's kind of diary prompts to to inspire a new page in mine so you never know Mm -hmm. memento is another one uh i didn't i haven't even opened this app so i have to be honest i i'm just sharing what i know from steven's research (laughs) (laughs) well i play with all of them memento is iphone only it's a one-year subscription for four bucks again templates it also has some uh, siri shortcut support uh, for automatic entry you can set it up to automatically import content from social media sites so if you want to like journal, have a journal based around your Twitter feed. You can do that with Memento pretty easily. It's just an iPhone app, so there's no sync, but it does back up its data to iCloud automatically every day. So your data is not synced because it's only one app, but it is at least backed up to the cloud, uh, just to iCloud. That's automatic in Memento. Um, and then you have a Diary, which is spelled D-Y-R-I-I. Man, it is really hard for me to even want to try an app that works that hard on the name. It's it's trying hard. Uh, again, it's on iPhone, iPad, Mac. It's ten bucks on iOS, forty bucks on the Mac. Syncs with iCloud, um, so it just uses your iCloud space. It does something called automatic journal, which is very similar to the activity feed in day one, where it's looking at your location and kind of building that automatically for you. And it its sort of hook is it is kind of built for e- tracking emotional state over time. So it does some like word cloud features and and word filtering stuff. Uh, So if you want to track that sort of thing, diary is kind of built around that. And then you sort of have the the OG being Mac Journal. Yeah, that's what I can talk about. I used to be a big user of Mac Journal years ago, and it's you know it's it's it was great for its time, Mm -hmm. Um, but you know day one is running circles around it, in my opinion. And, And Mac Journal's story is kind of confusing. So. Mariner Software ran it for a long time. It's now back with the original developer. Version 5 is still on the App Store, but version 7 is the current one. It's free, but it has limited support. It's kind of like a, you know, hey, just use this if you want it. It will import your day one data, but it doesn't sync it anywhere, and the UI is is painfully old. It's not one that I really consider to be serious anymore. It really was the only way to do this. I mean, heck, I remember working at the Apple Store you could buy a Mac Journal in a box. Like it was the Mac yeah. app for this, but it's just yeah. of a different era now, and it just hasn't it hasn't kept up. It was probably an egghead at one point. <laughs> yeah, man, that wow, that's not something I've thought about in a long time. Yeah, uh, day one really, I think, is the choice if you want to like really take this on. I, I do think all the options we've shared are fine. Uh, I like the idea if you want to just roll your own of like a Dropbox text something or another. It's there. But I, at the same time, uh, I am super happy that day one has succeeded and is in the market and available to me. I've used it for so long. It's just sort of integrated into how I work. And as they adopt new features, as, as Apple's technology moves forward, it just keeps getting better and better with age. And and that's really the highest praise I, can, I think I can give an app that I use day to day is that it continues to evolve and adopt new technologies as they become available to, to remain relevant. Uh, I, I plan on using it for a long, long time in the future. You know, if we check back in years and years from now on this, I fully expect that day one will still be on, on the dock of my Macs and it's on the first home screen of my iPhone. And, you know, that um, that whole captain's log thing where you can record yourself and have it transcribe it, mm-hmm. uh, that even though, you know, I was talking about doing it with your kids later, 
I, I've really only started doing that in earnest about the last six months. Whenever they release that feature, I really like it. And I can see myself in years forward going back and listening to myself just to kind of, I think you almost get a little more context by hearing myself recorded as mm. opposed to just mm. the, the words on the screen. So I, I think that's really special. I mean, that's one of the yeah. features of the application and a great entry point if somebody doesn't want to write. Yeah, I don't do much of that. That's something I want to, I'm going to play with that. That's my takeaway from this uh, episode, I think, is to explore that feature a little bit. I Maybe it's just my voice. I don't know. But it's like, uh, I've got a, a post I've been working on for literally months about what to do for voice dictation now that Dragon has abandoned the Mac. and right. And Dragon Anywhere, for whatever reason, for me, has turned to garbage on iOS. It was it was such a good dictation app for so long, and it just stopped mm-hmm. working. I don't know what... I, I still am confused about that. Um, but anyway, so I've got some solutions. But, but one of the big takeaways for me is, man, the um, voice-to-text transcription in day one is crazy good. It's probably one of the best... I mean, it's not perfect, but I mean, it's probably one of the best uh, examples of that I've seen. Yeah, uh, absolutely. This was a fun episode to do. We're a little nervous about a whole episode on journaling, um, especially because Stephen was worried I would go completely hippie and granola (laughs) on everyone, right? A little worried. You were a little worried, right? Yeah, I think we're all okay, though. Okay. But I can say, as uh, your friendly Mac Power Users host, that uh, this stuff has made a difference for me. And I think it helps me kind of keep a little perspective on my life. And maybe it's worth trying. And whether you decide to do it through day one or write it on a napkin, I don't care. Pick pick whatever works for you. But but try this out. Let us know how it goes. Uh, anything exciting going on in your life, Stephen? I just got back from Atlanta. We did a live episode of The Pen Addict, which is a show here on Relay FM. We go down and film that for the Kickstarter backers. So uh, I got back in town like... 24 hours ago. So I don't, I don't know what's happening this week yet, but, uh, uh, that's always a fun show. It's fun. I met some MPU listeners down there. So if you said hello, thank you. If it feels like telling you before the show, it's like all downhill to WWDC. Now it's going to be here before we know it. Mike keeps threatening to bring me to one of his pin shows and I have kind of been putting it off cause I'm, I'm nervous about it, frankly. We're doing the San Francisco show in August. So you can come <laughs> up to the Bay area and we'll do that. You're not helping. It's the biggest helping. one there is. So if you're going to go to one of them, you should go to that one. All right. I'm going to go. Yes. I'm going to call Mike right now. I'm going to set this up. <laughs> uh, I'm doing fine. The, I put that setup page at Max Sparky. It's uh, maxsparky.com slash gear. I did it uh, at your prompting on a recent episode. Got tons of great feedback on it. People are kind of liking uh, seeing it. I actually took a picture of the underside of my desk after threatening to do so for so many years. Yes. Uh, do, do you approve? Well, I, I haven't talked to you about this. I didn't know. I was a little nervous that you'd look at the underside of my desk and, and just shake your head no. Hey, you know, I'm scrolling the page. I'm scrolling the page now. Uh, it's all nice and tidy. You know, you've got uh, you got cables just nicely labeled. I think it's great. Okay, good. Wow, I was really nervous. Uh, it could have been the end of the MPU. I don't know. I mean, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I approve as long as those uh, time machine drives don't fall off. And I guess you're using some pretty good Velcro. Uh, you know, it's funny uh, on that. Oh, I no. used I used industrial Velcro at the mm-hmm. beginning, and then I realized because one of the drives started going bad. Industrial Velcro is very strong, mm-hmm. <laughs> and and getting that to come off. Oh, too strong. It's like... Uh... <laughs> yes, I actually had to get a screwdriver at it, and I think Pry, I damaged the already damaged drive. But the um, Oh, man. So I just use regular Velcro now. I've, I've changed my ways. Okay. I don't have anything Velcroed anywhere. Although, like you, I've got uh, cables gaff taped and zip tied with screws to the bottom of the desk. Gaff tape is uh, changes your life. If you mm-hmm. don't have any gaff tape, if you take one thing from this episode, go on Amazon and order yourself a roll of gaff tape right now. I'm just saying. I'll put my favorite brand in the show notes. All right. All right. But, you know, also start a journal. It'll improve your life. But, you know, yeah. gaff tape. <laughs> yeah. sure. And if you uh, if you print out the book and it starts breaking, use some gaff tape on it. I'm glad you brought that back around. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. We're the Mac Power Users. Thank you to our sponsors today. Uh, One Password Smile, Warby Parker, and Squarespace. And we will see you all next week.